All right. Seems to be working pretty well. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Tadeáš Kříž. Uh, past three years, I've been developing mobile applications. And uh, from this June, I'm working in Red Hat. Um, today, I'd like to tell you how can AeroGear simplify your mobile development and how can it help you. Um, just before I start, how many of you are mobile developers or developed something on mobile? All right, and how many of you are familiar with iOS? Okay. Today's uh, mobile world is full of different platforms, and to okay. Is that better? Uh, is that better? Uh, okay, I can try. Um, so, in order to succeed, uh, you have to choose the target wisely. Um, if you choose only one platform to support, uh, you might end up with a small audience and no one will buy that application or pay for your service, someone, something like that. But if you choose multiple platforms, it really depends on which technology you will choose to develop those applications with. First technology you can uh, go with is hybrid applications. This is very easy for web developers because it's all written in HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. Basically, um, those applications run on every platform uh, not just mobile platforms, but also uh, desktop platforms like in browsers, browsers and so on. Um, great advantage is that you only need one development team uh, and that you can cut down your expenses with that uh, pretty much. And um, also the development team who does your web application uh, can do the mobile application easily. So, as I said, one development team for all you need. Um, there are some disadvantages. Uh, that's low performance, uh, bad, user ex bad user experience, and uh, the problem is that each platform has different set of guidelines for the UI, like uh, Android has tabs on the top and iOS has uh, tabs on the bottom, and something like that. And users are used to that. So if you make hybrid applications, uh, most likely uh, it won't be so good for the user. Then there's a second approach, and that's to make native applications. Um, I'll talk about Android and iOS native applications, uh, but it basically, uh, this is for all, all the other. Uh, platforms. So, advantage, great user experience. Basically, when you make native applications for each platform, uh, you can um, focus on each of them. So, you will deliver the best user experience. Um, also, uh, that means that you will be compliant with the guidelines, and that's, uh, that's very important for Apple because when you want to publish your application on App Store, you have to comply with those guidelines. So um, if you do hybrid application, uh, basically most of the time the application looks like on iOS on all the platforms to comply with uh, App Store guidelines. Um, disadvantages. Uh, you have to learn multiple languages and APIs and each platform is different. Uh, also, you need one development team per platform or more skilled developers and uh, spend more time on the development. So that means uh, it's more expensive to make native applications. And uh, that's when AeroGear comes in. Um, basically, AeroGear tries to deliver uh, to all three platforms I've spoken of, like uh, Android native apps, iOS native apps, and hybrid applications. Uh, for Android, uh, the library is in Java, 
For iOS, it's in Objective-C, and for the hybrid applications, it's, of course, in JavaScript. So, um, AeroGear has two main goals. Uh, firstly, to simplify, and secondly, to unify development across all these supported platforms. Um, let's talk about this for a moment. Um, when, you uh, you, when, you, when you are developing an app, uh, there are certain bits of code you have to write every single time. And that's why there are libraries you can download and use, but um, finding the right ones is a painful process because um, on each platform there are different libraries with different APIs. Sometimes there's not, uh, the, uh, they don't have the features you need and so on. Uh, so AeroGear provides lots of common features uh, that you would need to write or you would need to find a um, library for, but it unifies those features across all these platforms. So uh, when you want one feature on, let's say, Android, uh, you will find it in, uh, in the iOS library too with very similar API. So what can AeroGear offer? First, and I think it's the most awesome thing in AeroGear, it's the pipe. Uh, pipe and pipeline. Um, basically, pipe is an abstraction for uh, work with data. Nowadays, users want uh, applications that are responsive and that provides feedback to users' actions. Um, the problem is those applications often need to do time-consuming operations, like uh, fetching data from remote server, accessing files on, on the file system, and something like that. And uh, for that, you need to uh, do that in background threads. Um, that, that's something that uh, is not as easy to do because you need to make your own uh, callbacks, uh, you need to somehow get back to the UI thread on mobiles, and you can't, um, well, basically it's a lot of code you will need to write uh, if you want to do a background stuff. Pipes do that for you. Uh, it's very easy to implement your own, uh, your own pipe. Um, AeroGear provides REST adapter pipe, uh, which is basically to access REST, uh, REST services. Um, in second demo, I will show you uh, how easy it is to consume REST uh, service. And uh, also, what's great about the pipes is that you can switch between the data sources very easily without, ch without changing the code. So let's say uh, you will have uh, only SQL storage for the first version of your application, and you will write a pipe for that store. You will use that pipe on everywhere when you need to read from the store, save it to the store, or delete. And then one day you will decide that you want to make that application cloud-based. You want the, those data move into cloud. You will just use the REST adapter, or you will implement something to store it into uh, SQL and the uh, cloud server. And basically, you won't need to change the code of the whole application, you will just change the creation of the pipe. Another thing that's not as easy to do on mobile platforms is data persistency. Um, storing various type of data uh, is different on each platform. Uh, on iOS, you have the core data. On Android, you have to uh, use SQLite which uh, you need to create um, SQL uh, commands and so on. And uh, that's where AeroGear comes with uh, data manager and store. Uh, again, similar to the pipes, store is an abstraction for handling uh, different types of storage. You can store data uh, temporarily into the memory or persistently into the file store or uh, SQLite database. Um, because each platform has its limitations, uh, 
like you can have SQLite server in, uh, in, in JavaScript. Uh, there are different implementations of those stores in AeroGear, but there is always one implementation for temporary storage and one implementation for persistent storage. Last feature I would like to talk about before showing you the demo is another great feature of AeroGear, and that's push. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of what push is, um, basically nowadays uh, applications don't ask the server for data like every 10 minutes to check if something changed. Uh, it works the other way around. It works the way that you have uh, a server into which the application registers itself and uh, when a change is made on the server, uh, the server sends a notification to all these uh, different um, push uh, providers, which is Google Cloud Messaging for Android, uh, yes, sorry, Android, uh, APNS for Apple, and Simple Push for uh, web applications like, uh, like the Cordova hybrid applications or uh, basic web applications and something like that. And uh, then the push notification is propagated to the device, and the device can respond to that, like fetch data from the server or show notification to user, something like that. But uh, it's difficult because when you uh, develop multi-platform application, you have to um, make service uh, you, you have to implement your own registration for all these platforms, which is different on each platform. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to send the notification to uh, all these providers, and you have to write this yourself. AeroGear provides unified push server, which unifies this into, uh, into one API, which is REST-based, and uh, easy to use. You can just uh, simply, you can see there, uh, you just send the message to the server, and uh, the server handles all the, uh, all the, let, uh, sorry. Well, the, the, the server sends it to all those uh, providers, and also you can filter uh, onto which devices you want uh, the message to come in. Like uh, you can only select to uh, to send message into iOS devices or only iPhones or only iPhones with version seven or something like that. All right, demo time. Um, I've written this application on iOS and Android. Uh, it's simple to do list application. Um, it will be slow, uh, and I will describe why that is, uh, but, well, let me show you. So, um, uh, let's add a new task. Ah, sorry, my, my fault. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, is that better? <laughs> Okay, um, so let's add a new task. Uh, and, well, that's not cool. That's not cool, not cool at all. Um, that's something with the, um, with the Wi-Fi, I'm afraid. Um, how is that? Wi-Fi. Um, just like the internet, you know. Not, uh, All right, now it should work, hopefully. Yeah, so um, 
as you could see, uh, it instantaneously uh, showed up on the other device. When I, let's say, uh, check one, it will propagate through the, uh, th through the server and uh, it changes on the other device. Um, oh, let's check this one too. Um, Okay, um, I would like to uh, talk about how this works. Um, it works the way that um, each time the change is made on the device, like you add a new task, you delete one task, edit task, there's a REST call to server. Then the server saves this information, th this action, and sends a notification to the unified push server, and then it's delivered uh, to all the devices that are connected, and uh, then the devices basically just calls for all the, the list of the, all the tasks. Um, that's why it's so slow. Uh, basically, it, it was for the, for the simplicity of the demo, so uh, yeah, it, it reloads all the data from the network uh, every single time uh, change is made. Like when you check the task, it reloads and something like that. Um, okay. Uh, this is uh, code in, uh, in Objective-C. Um, this is how easy it is to save data into the uh, REST server. Um, as I said, it works on the pipe and you just call pipe safe and uh, the data will get into the server. Um, the server needs to implement uh, REST, uh, REST service, uh, it has to be a REST service and has to comply with, with the REST um, guidelines. Or, uh, um, this is how the server sends the push notification. Um, you can see there's the push application ID master secret. Uh, these are two things you will get from the uh, unified push server uh, when you register an application. Um, then there's the attribute. Uh, it's just there because I wanted to show how you can um, easily add your own data into the message. Uh, this attribute will get to the device, so you will be able to read the value of, well, in this case, reload, uh, reload attribute. And then you basically send a message and it will get to the server. Um, with the builder, uh, you can also set the filters. Uh, like, as I said, for different kinds of devices, aliases, and so on. And uh, that's how the data is reloaded. Uh, again, when the notification is received on the device, you just call read on the pipe and uh, it reads all the data from the REST server. Another thing uh, in AeroGear is two-factor authentication um, using one-time password, OTP. Um, I've, uh, I've think out uh, three, way, uh, three things you might do with this. Uh, first is to build your own Google Authenticator only for your own application with your own custom look and feel. Um, also, you might include the token generation into your application as an extra feature. So if you have a service where, it, where there is a web login and, and you have the application, you might provide uh, this token generation inside that application for the user to be able uh, to sign in with the second step. Uh, or you can uh, make your application authenticate uh, using the password of the user and uh, then with the OTP for uh, better security. Uh, basically, this uh, avoids um, replay attacks because uh, the token is changing over time, uh, so it's like, well, adding more, uh, adding another password which is uh, not constant. Now I would like to talk about uh, crypto and security. 
Um, working with uh, encryption of files and, and uh, data on different platforms is again uh, not simple because uh, as, as working with uh, that, uh, that data persistency, it works the same with, with the encryption. Uh, on each platform, there's different framework, different way to call that framework, and so on. Um, so you can use Aerogear Crypto to do that for you, and you will just uh, give it the data you want to encrypt, and it will do this for you. Uh, this includes the encrypted SQL store and encrypted memory store, which are, uh, as I said before, um, implementations of, of the uh, store. And uh, you can just uh, switch between a uh, normal store and, and, and this encrypted store. And the only uh, change you need to do is when you're opening the store, you have to, uh, you have to say what will the pass brace be, um, what will encrypt the data. Um, and the security, uh, that's mainly for uh, Java web applications. Uh, it's set of classes uh, that allows you to uh, use your own security provider, but it's uh, some, some, uh, sorry, uh, some functionality that you need to write yourself. Uh, and it combines uh, this for different uh, security providers. Uh, I have their example picket link. Um, another thing uh, is authorization. authorization. Um, when you use, for example, REST service, uh, oftentimes th there, is, um, there is some kind of authorization required. Uh, that's why AirGear uh, have this uh, way to authorize. Uh, basically, you just set the authorization provider into the pipe, and the pipe will use it uh, when it needs to authorize uh, with the rest or well, uh, any other, uh, other da data source provider. Um, currently, uh, currently, sorry, uh, currently supported uh, is the REST authentication on all platforms and then the basic and digest on, on Android and iOS. Um, I myself uh, am very excited about the all out too, uh, because that will make development of uh, rest uh, rest consuming applications a lot easier. All right um, now I would like to show you how easy it is to uh, consume rest data uh, from a server. Um, I've, uh, I've prepared some kind of scaffolding. Uh, I've prepared the dependencies and, and the UI. And now I will like to show you uh, how to um, consume data from uh, Travis. Uh, how many of you use Travis? Right. Um, basically, I will just uh, load list of repositories that AeroGear has on Travis and uh, mark them with green if the, uh, if the repository built it successfully, or mark it with red if it wasn't successful or anything else happened. So, um, okay. Uh, I will write this in Objective-C uh, and for iOS. Uh, that's because uh, I'm more familiar with iOS nowadays, so it will be easier for me. Uh, so, when you want to uh, start the pipe, that's the first thing we need to do. Uh, we need to create pipeline. Um, in order to create a pipeline, we need to pass it an URL uh, on which it will work. So, in our example, uh, we'll use sorry. Um, Uh, that's the HTTPS uh, API service dash. Okay, thanks. Um, that's the uh, API uh, API URL of Travis, uh, and then we need to create the pipeline. 
Um, it's as easy as that. You just call pipeline with a base URL and pass in the server URL you work with. Um, now we have the pipeline. The pipeline is basically a way to create pipes on uh, different endpoints of, uh, this, um, uh, of this URL. Uh, you should use it the way that each pipeline is for uh, each base URL. But there's a way to change only one pipe if, if you want to. And then we need to create a pipe. Like so. Um, here the pipeline uh, calls our blog here uh, so we can configure the pipeline. Um, in our case, we need to set the name well, let's say repos. And then we need to set uh, the endpoint because um, if, it, if we didn't, it would use uh, the repos, the name, as an endpoint. So it would uh, call the travisci.org slash repos. But uh, in our, uh, in our uh, case, we need different endpoint, and that's repos slash arrow gear. Right. So now we have the pipe, and uh, basically in real application, you would store uh, this pipe, or you will store the pipeline and then get the pipe by its name. Um, in, in our example, we will just uh, do this uh, when we load the application and load the data. So something like that. Um, you can basically simply read from the pipe or save into the pipe and delete. Um, and on iOS, uh, you'll get this, um, uh, this block, uh, which is on success, and or the, there is the block on failure. In, uh, in Java, you will pass in um, an instance of uh, a callback, uh, which has on success and on error uh, method, so you can, uh, you can process the data you got. Um, in, our, uh, in our case, we, uh, uh, the response object will be an array of uh, dictionaries, uh, which is basically a representation of the JSON. So uh, for Java word, it would be like JSON object. And we need to store that uh, in order to show it later. So let's start it that way. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to uh, bother about the failure right now. Um, let's just hope there won't be any. Uh, otherwise, you would just notify the user or, or do some, something, like, uh, something similar. Uh, OK, now we need to present the data to the user. Uh, on iOS, that's a lot simpler than on Android. Uh, working with, with the table view, uh, Table is a lot easier. So uh, let's do this. Uh, in this method, I will um, return the count of the items. So it's like if, so, if items is not null, return the count or zero. And then we need to uh, create the cell uh, for each um, uh, for, e for each uh, row we, will, we want to display. So that will be like, like that. Okay. So um, now we will get the, the item from the, uh, from the array. And uh, now we can basically just set the text, which is item object for key. 
and Slack. Uh, that's the name of the repository. And then we will set the background color. Uh, if the item object for key, uh, sorry, last build status uh, is equal to zero. In this case, it's successful. Otherwise, it's not. UI color green or red. So and now when I run this application, it should work. So let's pray it will. Uh, OK, it's on the other display. And it's too big. All right, I didn't expect that. Well, probably um, typo somewhere in the in the naming. <sighs> well, um, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Um, I had to, well, wrong, uh, wrong type the, uh, the URL or, or, or the repository endpoint. I'm sorry about that. Um, well, that's very unfortunate. Anyway, um, that's my fault. Uh, <laughs> that's my fault that I, I've, uh, I've um, messed with the. Um, uh, with the URL, and uh, basically this would work if the if uh, the endpoint uh, was right, um, and it would show us all the repositories marked with green uh, or red. Uh, if, uh, um, as I said, if it was right. Well, never mind. Let's get back to the slides. Um, okay. So um, when to use AeroGear? Uh, as you could see, uh, if it was working, uh, it's really easy to uh, start from scratch and uh, use the pipes. And uh, you can build the application very easily on multiple platforms. Uh, basically, when you have uh, one platform done with the AeroGear, it's very simple to add another one. Um, you can almost copy paste if it was the, uh, the, if the syntax was the same. You would be just copy pasting the code, uh, and that's how easy it is to add another platform if you already have one using AeroGear. Um, also, you might want to just add some of the functionality that AeroGear provides, like the push, uh, push notifications. Uh, that would be very easy to implement into uh, into current application. And as I said, uh, if you already have uh, a product in which you don't use AeroGear uh, and you want to add another platform, it's n not really difficult to add another with the um, with the AeroGear if uh, if your uh, API I I is is good and so on. Okay. Um, so testability, um, AeroGear is well covered with unit and integration tests, so it's uh, pretty well tested. And uh, you can learn from how the way AeroGear is tested, because mobile testing is uh, not easy way, uh, easy thing to do. Uh, it's, uh, th there are not tools uh, available and so on. So I would like to uh, recommend you uh, to attend functional testing of web and Android applications with Arclean, Graphene, and Droidium, which is here on DevConf uh, on Saturday at 12.30. Uh, um, AeroGear is not just the Java, Objective-C, or JavaScript. Uh, it's a set of defined protocols, and uh, it's ready to write in other languages. And you can make your own implementations and share with the community. 
and uh, also for the uh, for the push uh, push server, you might use another language li uh, like the Node.js or PHP. Um, I think that it's the last last uh, thing I will talk about is the sync. Uh, it's currently in development, but uh, when it's done, it should be very powerful because you will basically all the data you have on one uh, one application will be synchronized across all users' applications. So let's say the user have your application on his mobile phone, tablet, and on, he uses your website. So when he changes something on the mobile phone, it will propagate into, um, into the web and the tablet. So he won't, be, he won't need to copy it himself or use only one platform when doing something. He will just have the ability to continue working when he switches the platform. Right, questions and answers. Is it open source? Uh, the question was, is it open source? Yes, it's fully open source. Uh, you can find it on GitHub, and it's a website, I forgot to mention it, it's aerogear.org. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the question was, if you write it in the Objective-C uh, for iOS, if you need, uh, then if you need to rewrite it in Java for Android. Yes, you have to. That was the uh, native uh, way. You can also do it the hybrid way, which you write it in HTML, JavaScript, and, and CSS, and that's the only thing you do, and then it works on Android, iOS, uh, Windows Phone, well, basically everywhere uh, it's... You use the Cordova from Apache. It's also open source. And uh, you can uh, use it on all, all those platforms, as I said before. Why a lot of work? Hmm? Sorry? Why a lot of work? Well, um, that's, the, that's the price of making great user experience. Uh, so it's like the hybrid application is a great way to um, make application for your uh, like enterprise service. And uh, if you want just uh, added value for the users, uh, like um, OpenShift, I think it was OpenShift, just uh, made mobile application uh, through which you can uh, basically restart your, your uh, container, um, create new containers, and something like that. And it's, it's in uh, PhoneGap. Uh, it's another uh, hybrid framework. And uh, well, as I said, it works on all platforms that are supported by the, by the framework. Yes? Uh, how many people were on uh, the library development? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm not quite sure. Please repeat the question. Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, the question was how many people are working on the development of the library. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, well, about... Ten, maybe something like that. Okay. And, uh, which Android and iOS versions are currently supported? Those APIs, which is only for Android core. Yeah. Uh, the question was uh, which versions of Android and iOS are supported. Uh, on Android, it's uh, from two point three point three, I think. Uh, it, it's the API nine. And on iOS, it's from uh, iOS five, but. Uh, well, a Apple just says that you have to ship iOS 7 applications, so it might ship there. Okay. So we are out of okay. time. We are okay. running out of the time, so if you have <coughs> any other questions, catch Tadeash in the lobby and we can discuss there. Oh. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and I the feedback. Okay. Uh, there's also this uh, this feedback for the presentation. Um, I would like you to fill it in and uh, tell me what was good, what was not good, and so on. Oh. <laughs> 
Ne, 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 stačí dvě, tři hodiny by to mělo vydržet. A teď navíc přijde ten člověk a ještě zesílí uh, citlivost tady na tom, aby to bylo ještě líp slyšet. Mm -hmm. A prezentuje? Já jsem si Ten já jsem to Já jsem musel poté ostatně, možná USB kluč myslím. Já jsem se taky. Jo, už je. Jo. Dovoj na začátku. Chceš? Jo, chceš. Oni zešli vždy ve vrbu. Uh, 